cultivating partnerships, in-row weed control options for farmers large and small. As part of a generous grant through North Central SARE, the Brainerd Lab at Michigan State University has worked over the last year to gather valuable information on past and current knowledge on in-row weed control. This video series is the culmination of that effort. In early 2017, the Brainerd Lab, along with three Midwestern vegetable farmers, visited with researchers, manufacturers, and farmers in Switzerland, France, and the Netherlands, and learned how they effectively use mechanical weed control machines that are largely produced in those regions. The information on the Flextine cultivator, finger weeder, and torsion weeder provided in these videos come from applied research done by the Brainerd Lab, trials of our farmer partners carried out over the 2017 growing season, and the information we gathered through our travels in Europe. We hope that the expert advice we share here will assist growers in the U.S. in both choosing the best equipment for their system and using it effectively. The Flextine Cultivator is a blind cultivation tool used to uproot small, white thread stage weeds between and within planting rows. The specs of the Flextine will vary by model. Spacing of tines will be on 1 inch to 3 inch centers, and numbers of rows of tines can differ. The wider the distance between tines, the faster the machine must be drawn in order for the tines to vibrate enough to weed the entire planting area. The thickness, length, and shape of the point of the flex tine will also vary, but can be changed out depending on conditions. Longer, thinner tines will accommodate tender crops, while short, thick tines should only be used on forage and turf systems. The flex tine weeder is designed to be run fast, so that the vibrating tines can shatter soil clods, leaving very small weeds to die on the soil surface. Because the tine weeder is only capable of uprooting white thread stage weeds, the weeder should be run every five to seven days for effective control. Setting tension adjustments so that the tine is more aggressive will decrease the vibration, but will break up crust and uproot weeds and potentially crops. A looser adjustment will increase vibration. When crops and weeds are at the correct size, the vibrating tine will move around the well-rooted crop and dislodge or uproot the small vulnerable weed. When the size of the crop and weed are not correct, there will be more damage to crops and less control of weeds. The most important part of using in-row cultivation tools effectively is the setup and calibration of that tool for your specific conditions. Adjustments can vary widely depending on crop, weed pressure, soil type, and climate. Making sure to set aside space and time to understand the tool and make adjustments to optimize the tool's effectiveness for different conditions will help you get the most out of your investment. My name is Marisa Bensley and I'm a master's student here in the horticulture department at Michigan State University and today we're going to be talking about setup and calibration for the Flextine cultivator. Now uh, before I even start to set up and calibrate I want to make sure that my environmental conditions are, are right. So I want to make sure that I have sunny conditions, windy conditions, hot conditions, something that's going to make sure that that weed that gets uprooted is killed and desiccated on the soil surface so that it doesn't re-root. Then I want to go through and take a look at my piece of equipment and I want to make sure that I don't have any damaged tines, um, bent tines. Um, so like this one over here, I would want to go through and make sure that's all fixed up so that I'm getting the same amount of depth um, and aggression on each time that's going through the soil. In a similar way, I want to go through and make sure that the bed of tines is level, not only when I've got it um, hooked up on a soil surface, but also as it's running through the field. So I want to take a look at it after it's at depth in field, and I want to make sure that every tine is at the same depth. Then, uh, as I'm setting the depth of my tines, I prefer to use uh, a machine that has gauge wheels. Some machines even have four gauge wheels, which makes it really easy to keep everything level. 
but you can get the same effect with a little bit more effort using your top link to make sure that everything is leveled out. The last thing is that uh, for myself, I like to start off with my tines with the highest tension um, because I prefer to push my way through the field, but it really depends uh, on your soil conditions and the type of crop that you're working with. Your soil type and your soil moisture level are gonna have a big impact on exactly how well this piece of equipment works. So first off, if your soil conditions are very heavy, very clay, um, or just don't have a lot of organic matter in them, then it's gonna be very difficult to get that vibrating action that you wanna see in the flex time. So if you have a very, very heavy soil, this might not be the best piece of equipment for you. Likewise, if you have really wet conditions, you're gonna see a lot of drag in these times, and you're just not gonna see that vibrating action that you really wanna see. I was told uh, by a salesperson of a flex tine cultivator that if you're not seeing a little bit of dust, you might not have the right conditions. If you have an opportunity to have somebody uh, walk behind you and make sure that you're getting that vibrating and shattering action, that's really gonna be best. The other thing you can look for, and this will happen in overly crusted or overly dry conditions, as well as overly wet conditions or overly clay conditions. If you're just seeing a line and you're seeing soil in between those two lines that are totally undisturbed, those conditions are either too dry, too crusted, or too much clay, too wet. And you're just not gonna see the action that you really wanna get out of this piece of equipment. Um, the best possible conditions for this piece of equipment are gonna be something with sand or very loamy, um, and is uh, a good amount of dry but not overly crusted. What you're gonna see in those conditions is you're gonna see all of the soil surface is shattered, uh, so you're gonna have that crumbly texture as you go through, and there's not gonna be any soil left that's undisturbed. There are really three major adjustments that I make on this piece of equipment, and that would be the tension of the actual tine itself the depth of the tine in the soil and the speed that I'm gonna drive at. And a lot of people will reference these as different amounts of aggressiveness, but there's also a few minor differences to those adjustments. So for me, like I talked about a little bit before, the tension in the tine, the difference between different tensions is gonna be that you're either pulling the point of the tine which can cause more vibrating action versus pushing the point through the soil. The difference is in effect is really gonna have to do with your soil conditions. Like I mentioned before, if you've got more of a crusted soil, you're probably gonna wanna push through that to lift it up a little bit. If you've got really fluffy, nice, sandy soils, then you're gonna be able to pull that behind you and you're gonna get more of that vibrating action. If you have also larger weeds, or weeds that are more difficult to get out, pushing it through is gonna lift up those weeds right out of the soil. The other major difference is gonna be your depth. Your depth is going to affect uh, your weeds that might be shallow, more shallow, or more deeply rooted, or crops that are more shallow or more deeply rooted. In general, you're gonna wanna try to keep your depth as shallow as possible reason for that is that you want to try to avoid bringing more weed seeds to the surface. And because you're really trying to go after weeds that are uh, that white thread stage, you're going to want to try to keep those on the surface. And if you're doing things at the right time, then those should do a great job at lifting those white thread weeds out of the soil. The other um, adjustment you can make is your speed. So we usually drive this thing pretty fast, around six to eight miles per hour. Depending on your crop, uh, you can drive it faster or slower. Uh, we tend to drive it pretty quickly, uh, but we're usually working with pretty large seeded and tough crops that can take it. Uh, but what we're shooting for is again, that vibrating action. And we're shooting to be looking at a bed at the end where all of the soil is shattered 
um, and crumbly on the surface. The other issue that you're going to want to be paying attention to is what type of weeds you have in your field. Uh, this piece of equipment is great at killing uh, white thread uh, stage annual weeds. It's not so great at perennial weeds. So if you're seeing weeds like this, this yellow nut sedge here, you're really going to want to back this up with a different type of equipment or perhaps some hand labor to come in and, and clean this up. The other thing along with uh, annual versus perennial weeds you're going to be paying attention to is the stage that your weed is at. Now we've been talking about white thread stage and what you want to be doing is actually going through and not just looking and seeing if you have weeds that are at the cotyledon stage which are usually white threads and you can see through here there's quite a few that are about at the cotyledon stage. But if you have an opportunity to go earlier uh, what I like to do is actually go through my soil and just scrape over a little bit and see if I can see any um, seeds that are just emerging. These grasses have really deep rooting systems you can see and if you're talking about uh, a crop that is just emerging and it's competing with this um, deeply rooted grass, it's going to be very difficult to control. The other thing that's really important is the differential between your crop size and your weed size. And it's important to look at the height. So, you know, we can see with some of these crops, they're obviously taller uh, than some of these grasses or other weeds over here. But what you really want to be paying attention to is the rooting depth. So, actually take some time and dig up uh, your plants if it's post-emergence weeding that you're doing and take a look and make sure that these crops are actually deeper rooted than your weeds. If they're not deeper rooted than your weeds, uh, then try to adjust your practices that you're using a little bit and really try to shoot to get that differential. The other thing that we can do uh, to promote that is using this on crops that are larger seeded like squash or beans and planting them as deep as possible and then aggressively flex tining pre-emergence so that we can get that effect of having a clean seed bed going through as crops emerge. So the other big question is what types of crops can we use this on and what stage can we use this on? For things like fruiting crops like beans or squash, uh, we can use this till they're maybe at about four to five inches tall. Um, as long as you're not killing your plants, then this is going to work out for you. With really tough, really well-rooted crops like leeks, like garlic, you can use this up until the plants are pretty mature. In Europe, we saw them using this at maybe around a foot tall, using garlic, uh, using it on garlic almost until the completion of the crop. But of course, for crops that uh, where you're selling the leaf, like a lettuce or something, this might not be the best tool for you. It can possibly damage crops. You are going to lose some crops. Uh, the thing that you're gonna be shooting for is to set your aggressiveness where you're killing the most weeds as possible and be willing to lose a couple crops in the process. Uh, it is gonna save you money in the long run by spending less time on hand labor. These machines, they're not magic. And really, the most important part of the preparation and the setup is actually making sure that you have a level field, making sure that your plantings are straight. If you don't have that effect, if you have a lot of waviness in either your planting row or the actual levelness of your field, then you're just not going to see um, the amount of optimization in your tool uh, that you should be seeing. So take your time and go out through your field, make sure that your beds are level, make sure that your rows are straight, and then all of these other tips and tricks will help you optimize things after that. The most widely available flex time cultivators in the U.S. include the Einbach cultivator, which comes with floating beds of tines and is sold in 5, 6, and 10 foot sections. It has options of 19 and 24 inch tines and can come with 2 or 4 gauge wheels. 
The Lely Tine Cultivator is attached to a stationary toolbar and sold in 7, 10, 14, and 19 foot sections. The Williams Tool System comes with optional side knives and guide wheels and tines are mounted on a stabilized toolbar. The Kovar Tine Weeder is mounted on a flexible wishbone and tines offer a patented cone coil design. Tines can also come in three different angles that offer more options for tine aggression and movement through soil. For the Einbach, tine tension can be adjusted with a single lever, while the Lely allows for the adjustment of one tine at a time. According to one of our Swiss hosts, Marcus Bucher, the popular European flex tine, the Treffler, automatically adjusts the downward pressure of each tine to be the same, with the use of hydraulic controls. He explained to us how this is a useful adjustment for crops grown on ridges, such as sweet corn and potato. Most models are lightweight and can be pulled by a relatively small tractor. Very lightweight models, such as the Lely, can lack the downward pressure required for crusted soils. I'm here today with Danae Friedheim, and um, we're going to be talking about the flex time. Uh, Danae is the interim director and farm manager of the student organic farm here at Michigan State. And she's been with us on this project from the beginning, went to Europe with us, uh, has been using different tools that we learned about, um, and being a part of this whole project. So, welcome, Danae. Thank you. You've been using the Lely Flex Tine on the student organic farm for a while. Um, how do you use it there? Uh, we use it if we had a stale seed bed um, application once the weeds are at the white thread stage, so their cotyledon leaves have just popped. We will take it in um, and just blindly cultivate the entire bed or the entire field before planting. Um, and then once we do plant, uh, with transplants in particular, uh, once they have established roots in the field, we can go in and, and cultivate again with it. Um, so at that white thread stage is primarily what we've been using it for. Okay. Are there any specific things about this model that you really like, you really appreciate? Yeah, I do appreciate that the, the individual tines are adjustable. Uh, so that you can raise and lower them depending on what's going on in the field or in your beds. So uh, you can get the pathways with it and you can have those tines be more aggressive than the ones that are in the bed um, so that you can just do one pass. Um, you can also raise them up completely. So uh, say your transplants are a certain size and you're, you're afraid of damaging them, you can lift it up so that you don't hit them at all. Um, it's also really nice because it, it can drag right over the transplants and not damage them. Um, so I do appreciate that. You can also actually set the aggressiveness using your three point as well as the depth of the tines um, by, by changing them and changing the notches that they're set on. And are there any critiques that you have about uh, this specific model or anything you wish was different? Yeah, the main thing is what I mentioned about uh, what we observed in Switzerland was that it would it would be nice to be able to um, change the aggressiveness of the tool from the tractor seat. Um, the other thing I would mention is that if you have any debris in the field, uh, the tines can easily pick that up and then it can catch on your transplants and rip them out, um, which makes it a little less efficient because if you notice that's happening, you have to stop the tractor get off, clear off the debris, and then continue on, or have someone who's following you. And are there any like tricks that you've picked up using the tool or things that you wish you knew about it uh, before you started using it? Yeah, I think that when I initially started using the tool, I was a little nervous um, that it would damage the transplants. Once I had been through maybe a season with it, or maybe not quite a season, um, I started to be more aggressive with the tool and I noticed better results and that the transplants were perfectly fine. So I would just recommend um, to people who are interested in it to not be afraid to be a little bit more aggressive than you think you can be um, at, you know, when you're working uh, with it over transplants. 
we've actually used it when we've gotten maybe a hard rain and then some dry weather and there's a crust that's been established on the field. Rather than going in and retilling that field before we, we plant into it or, or seed into it, we've been able to set the flex time very aggressively to go in and break up that crust. So it can not only be used for weeding, um, which it, it has, you know, it, it does that as well when you're breaking up that crust, but but also for that sort of field preparation. Thanks so much for being a part of the project. It's been great to work with you and good luck next season. Yeah, likewise, it was my pleasure. All right, thanks. Thank you for watching this video on the FlexTine Cultivator. Please be sure to see our other videos on in-row cultivation tools, profiling, the torsion weeder, and the finger weeder. Thank you to our farmer partners, both in the US and Europe, who shared knowledge and learned with us. A big thanks to our manufacturing and sales partners who informed us on the design and function of the machines we use throughout the project. Thank you to all the participants and organizers of the European Physical and Cultural Weed Control Working Group and the researchers at Wageningen University and Research. And of course, thank you to our funding partners and Michigan State University faculty and staff.